And it looks like we're on our way. So it's hopefully I don't stuff up the audio tonight. Hopefully. Okay. Now we sit and wait to see who falls into the trap. Hello Mao. Was that your first for the day? Now I'm just getting things set up. That's a little bright in my eye. I do need to get my lighting and audio set up better. Yes, these things just take time. I'll just wait for a couple more people to jump in and then I will get started. It's already it's already quarter past midnight. Hopefully I won't take too long tonight. Alright, I think we should get started or something. I might be here all night till the sun rises. Alright, well, this is a laptop from last week that had the one of the uh, power jacks burned. The one that had all the shorts in it. So, uh, let's see. There we had this one that had all the copper being exposed and we've bought a new one. So we're going to fit that and get this fixed up so I can get it back to the customer. As per expect uh, expectations, they have started to inquire as to why it still isn't fixed. Which is perfectly understandable. Uh, I said to him, well, we have to order those parts in. Without those parts, I can't do anything. Okay, ZX840, a bit early for me. Uh, you know, last night I was on even earlier. I guess you probably missed that. Actually, last night's stream was a little bit of a disaster. I, the uh, audio recording was all wrong. I switched the wrong thing and it ended up picking up from the uh, webcam, which was pretty much useless as it's got a very strong uh, right bias on it so I ended up having to download that stream re-encode it with the audio corrected and it still wasn't that great about the only thing great about it was uh, one of my cats showing up in it oh here we go again we had another one that it seems like when this particular one latches in it uh, it doesn't like to let go. Oh boy! Shove a pad. Where's my phone pad? I feel a little more. Um, I have a little more confidence when I've got this phone pad underneath because I don't feel like I'm scratching up the system. A little bit quiet today. I'm suspecting maybe everybody's being responsible and working. 
seriously? I didn't even... I did not even push down on this when I put it back into the case, and yet it's decided... Dear God, I hope the... Uh, oh, I know what's going on. I screwed in the... I screwed in the hinge screws. Oh, good thing I didn't push that too far. Wow, it's very quiet. What have we got? We've got 13 people at the moment watching. Which means we've got 11 of them being quiet observers, which is not a bad thing. I think maybe this time we'll have more success. Jeez, I hope that wasn't the sound of my uh, J JB world giving up. Hey, Stray! What the? Stray, I swear that I didn't see you there before and now all of a sudden you are there. Ah, oh, it's got the same... Could not play back your iPhone battery normalizer with very odd format or something. Uh, any, um, that, that is strange because it should all be just MP4. Come oh on, it's got one stupid little. Come on, gotcha. Haha. <laughs> You thought you could outlast me? You... I don't know, that's okay. Alright, now, here comes the fun bit. Now I have to remember how on earth this goes back together. And this is a big reason as to why I strongly despise working on PC laptops alike. Because you spend so much damn time going over the same thing. It's really strange because, yeah, I mean, as, um, yeah, I'm never going to say this right, as, as that, whatever, says, so yeah, it's coming off YouTube, it should be standard. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna... Were you fitting there? Are you, are you having a hard day too? Come on. There we go. If you've got time limits at your workshop or whatever, then working on PCs probably isn't a good thing. Suckers will suck the life out of everything. Okay, you guys obviously go into there. Yep. Yeah, well that's, that's what I was thinking. YouTube normalizes it, which is kind of funny given that it's a video about a battery normaliser. Itchy nose. Okay, now as I remember it, this power cord goes underneath this little USB daughter board, like so. Really, the moment I get busy, you can expect me to throw out the option of fixing PC boards. People are like, ah, oh, here you fix PCs. Like, no, nope, busy. Got 
And of course that's completely disregarding the fact that if you have to do any board level repairs, you can't even find the blimmin' correct ones 99% of the time. You usually you end up with a, well this almost is the right board, but it'll be sufficiently different to completely botch up your repair. I'm surprised that streaming does not impact on your workflow. Does it slow you down? Yes, it does. Um, and I think the bigger impact is the loss of IQ when you're doing the streams. Now, many a time in the past, I would watch people do streams and I would think, oh my gosh, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> you completely miss that and you completely miss that and so on and so forth. And then, of course, I go along and start doing a stream and I look back on it and I think, oh my goodness, I'm one of them. And I think it's a practice thing. Uh, I suspect people like Lewis uh, have done live streams now, videos even, for sufficiently long that they've developed that part of their brain. It's uh, had sufficient exercise now that they can actually conduct a uh, relatively coherent repair while on video. Whereas as for me, I am still most definitely struggling. It's like I've had a couple of beers or something even though I don't drink beer. <laughs> we don't like you losing income because of us. Oh, I'm not losing any income, believe me. Um, it's a case of... I do these machines that I would normally, say, have to do just off the side or something like that. Yeah, it's... I do the imperative stuff earlier in the day, the stuff that I know is definitely going to be making me money. And then the stuff I can sort of be a little bit more casual about, I do at night here on the streams. So. Yeah, no, believe me, um, you guys aren't costing me money or anything like that. No, if anything, this is actually somewhat beneficial to me on the grounds that, you know, I'm trying to build the YouTube channel. Um, you, know, you pick up advertising, <coughs> advertising money and um, Amazon link sales money and the occasional incredible uh, live stream donations which have been completely catching me off guard lately and leaving me stunned like a mullet. Uh, that looks like you need a screw there. Uh, yep, yep. Like I said, this is where I feel like a complete dunce because I don't even know what screws are going where at the moment. Okay. Oh, here we go, we've got some more comment. It's fun, it's all worth it. Everything you keep yourself from feeling bored and crappy. <laughs> hey Greg had to admonish a client yet again about using weak passwords or the same password for their online account. I have never seen someone who has to change their credit card information so much. <laughs> uh, uh, any tips for removing caked on dust? Um, it depends on what the substrate is. Like, is it soft plastic that it's all caked up on? I think ultimately you pick perhaps the um, hardest implement you can use, so like you know, a stainless steel spudger or a plastic one, such that it will not damage whatever you're uh, trying to get rid of it. I find if you use liquid and try to wash it off, that can be a long, painful process unless it's not too thick, because it just seems you soak it up. Uh, yeah, you get it all. Um, wet, ready to remove, and it just smudges everywhere. 
So certainly I try to remove as much as I can while dry. But like I said, it, it's one of those things where you really just have to go by feel. Yeah, like me right now, I'm going by feel on have I got this right? Let's see, what have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, and that's in the wrong place. Always good with these. If you put the top plate on, you can see if you've overlapped screws that you didn't have to. And that was one of them. It looks like it's it comes through the board. Okay. This has got the lengths stamped into them, but I can barely read the bloody stuff. Four, 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 and you're a 3.5 or something, so you're definitely this one. Or maybe you're not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so definitely that. Yeah, mm, wrong. Uh. For screws, I find it's useful to have a set of uh, calipers to measure them, if you're unsure. Right. Oh, on old circuit boards, typically. Ugh. Um, I legitimately do not know. Uh, you may have heard me squawk in the past, but I'm really not a... When you say old, I'm presuming like Bakelite old retired radio sh um, stuff that you pull out of some long since deceased person's estate. Otherwise, if it is, say, something more modern, that's um, fiberglass and green and stuff like that, perhaps ultrasonic. Yeah. It's really is subjective. I doubt I could give a comprehensive guaranteed answer on that one. Good evening, Mike. Hi, Kraje. YouTube notification of trash. If I hadn't checked my emails, would have missed the stream. I was watching one from earlier. Ah, Kraje, you're watching the uh, one from last night with the kitty cat and the that I had to redo. I would like to know what settings that YouTube uses because I downloaded my stream and unfortunately it gave it to me in 720 which was a little odd because I... what? you're 6.5, you're a big bugger uh, I swear I was uploading at 1080 on the workstation last night, but anyway, obviously not. So YouTube gives it to me in 720, and it was perhaps 500 megabytes in size for two and a half hours, which I thought was quite impressive. But then I try and code that to a similar quality standard, and the best I can do is two, t uh, two gigabytes. So I don't know how YouTube does it, but they do a splendid job. I suspect it would be prudent of me to actually boot test this. Okay, hi hi two one seven. These Aussie times are horrible. I'm in a class right now. Well, it's blimmin' midnight here. What more can a man do? What do you want me to do? Bleed? Hey Spencer. I use small MDT canisters to keep the same screws contained. Yeah, Mike, normally... Mike, what? Greg, sorry. Uh, what I used to normally do, and I probably will revert back to this, is I have my little... Um, naturally, I don't have one around. No. I have little six-cell six containers and they're nice because I can drop them, tip them over and everything and they don't spill out or you don't get cross-contamination. But lately I've been trying the big white tray. But most of the problem is not so much the screws getting mixed as such, but rather I'm just not being sufficiently mindful of what I'm doing. I 
and it's not the it's not the YouTube stream or anything like that. It's simply a case of if these jobs go beyond 24 hours, or even just a couple of hours for that matter, really, it's absurdly difficult to remember everything. Well, it's not like you it's not like you end up for real choice because you have to pull it apart obviously to determine what's going on and you don't really care to put it back together just while you wait but it would seem I may be faced with yeah, I guess that's my predicament do I put it back, waste the time putting it back together or do I waste the time trying to work out how to put it back together oh that is one janky janky connector on that power brick I may I will most likely donate a new well a power brick to them rather than let them continue on with that one we've got a fan spin all right as Lewis said we're good let's see if we actually get a boot have we got anything on screen do I have anything on screen is the screen not plugged in properly dear god if this doesn't work I'm almost certain that screen is properly plugged in. Okay. So we do not have a screen coming up. Marvellous. Well, I am at least pleased that I checked it now. That was the connector that last week when I pulled it off, it just the uh, s the pull-up strap just simply broke off so it is possible there may be a couple of contacts that didn't sit in properly when I repositioned it guess we'll find out plug in external yeah, I should do that what have I got for an external? Um, well, I'm not going to lose if I open it up anywhere. Put it that way. I am sus. Ah, oh, the F word. I have to take these bloody hinge. This is truly a test to see if these JV world hinges are holding. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I've worked out what's going on, or at least I believe so. And this is one thing that I have mentioned in a few of my streams in the past. It is my Achilles heel. It gets me every damn bloody time. Anyone want to guess? Anyone want to guess? Yeah, Greg, I normally would too. <laughs> it didn't beep at you with no memory. That is correct. It didn't, but then laptops almost never do, I found. PCs will, but for some reason laptops won't. Or at least not many of them. So, uh... Fingers crossed it was that. Do we even get power? No. Come on. Helps if the FPC is in. That's in, that's in. Oh, come on now. There we go. I was obviously just having a... There we go. We've got a screen boot. And the screen is fecked. Oh, sweet feck. I don't know if anyone else can see that. We've got a black alien... I mean, it works, but uh, it's it's not great. 
it's not good having this black blob there. If the person screams, kicks and complains about it, I fortunately do have a considerable number of uh, replacements that I can put in and it will simply be the cost of uh, my time. Alright, okay I can shut this down but in order to do that I need to plug in my USB keyboard and mouse I oh, love it how you can just plug these things in and they work. Is this the one where the screen was... No, Greg, that one is yet to come. The um, screen itself only just arrived at the supplier today. It's a bit of a joke. This is how the beautiful postal system works here. Uh, I sent... I can send three kilos, let's say one kilo. Express post, which is usually two days, maybe three, and that will cost me $15. Now, because I put that screen back, I left it in its original boxing, and it doesn't quite fit into these 3K express post sachets, and it weighed 910 grams, I think it was. And I get charged Express Post twenty-eight dollars for that same pa for that package, even though it's a third of the weight that the bag can carry, and it's less than the one kilo class. So I resort back to Standard Post, and Standard Post cost me eighteen dollars. It's ridiculous. Needs to say, next time I send a screen back, I may end up just bubble wrapping and then cardboard reinforcing because it's ridiculous how long I've got to wait. It's like, that's a, basically, it's an over, over a week now for it to arrive. And the customer is being good, but I don't like trading in my customer goodwill waiting on freight. I'd rather keep that customer goodwill for important things like, hey, you've got a dodgy screen here. Um, are you happy enough to keep with that? Yeah. Because if I tell them what it will cost to get a brand, brand new one, they will probably not really like the answer. Uh, for these, I usually charge about uh, 180 to do them, which is, uh, let's see, the screens themselves cost me about 80. That's overnight delivery. So I put 100 on top. And that covers me... I like to make sure that when it comes to dealing with parts that you've got to buy, I like to make sure I can, at the very least, if everything goes wrong, um, buy another replacement part with my margin. It's the same with my iPhones. Um, I still manage to pick up around about eighty, ninety dollars for doing iPhone screens here, and thankfully, when my competitor turned up about eight, nine months ago, they were not complete idiots, and they saw what my pricing was, and they basically maintained it. What happens when, oops, other than breaking keyboards like that, uh, what happens when you get idiots coming into the market, is the first thing they think of is, we're going to seriously undercut this guy, and we're going to make a killing by undercutting him, and all that ends up creating is a race to the bottom of the barrel and nobody wins. Everybody loses, customer loses, business loses, everybody loses. So fortunately they had that sense to um, stick with the pricing that I had. Well, pretty damn close to it, within a dollar or so. And so even though they have consumed a fair portion of my market due to their pro uh, Main Street location, which is you know, their advantage, uh, we haven't really eroded the profitability of it. Ah, always one spot. What have we got here? Uh, so, what 
where is that supplier getting screens from? Uh, this is... Oh, you mean the one that I had to send back? Yeah, God knows, probably the same place everyone else gets them. Oh, for flip's sake, come on. I hate it when you get one little latch that decides it still doesn't want to go in. There we go. That's it. Hey, Drabara. Uh, Discord. Never heard of Discord. Or maybe I have and it just hasn't struck a chord with me. Oh, oh, oh. oh that was terrible. Terrible father puns. Dad, dad joke level crap. <laughs> and yet I'm proud of it. Okay. Nope, that's wrong. They'll give me a nice excess of uh, Wi Fi lead here. Oh, here's a question for those in the know Is there a notable penalty if you get these cables back to front? Like you put white on black and black on white. Or is it nothing? Because I would have thought maybe these are di uh, dipole type configuration, in which case I can't really see any penalty. <sighs> yeah, Cryjay, if you've got a if you've got a undercutter in your market, then yeah, it's pretty much you may as well just start wrapping up because they. Yeah, they do release. Uh, they do ruin everything for everybody. Now I know when I was younger, I was, you know, a little bit like I can do this for cheaper, and then you pretty quickly learn that it's like, whoa, don't do that. Just stay with the market and offer, offer some sort of better, um, better reason for people to buy stuff from you. Going for the going for the easy kill with the undercutting is just yeah you lose. Same things happened in the um, electronic book market, the ebook market. All the indies they started out at about four ninety nine, maybe nine ninety nine even, and someone decided, hey, I can take a dive here and I'm gonna th cut my own throat and get a bit of marketing and that worked for the first few and then all of a sudden everybody's doing it and basically gutted the market completely uh, well. and the thing is that uh, I'm missing screws That's what I'm uh, though as I recall it this machine actually was missing screws right from the start But yeah, the book writers and whatnot, they uh, they still persist at this free or 99 cent model. And there's not many success stories amongst all that. There's a lot of, a lot of jealousy, a lot of anger, a lot, yeah, a lot of, uh, um, yeah, a lot of disparaging type things. Sing a few bars and it will be better. <laughs> Discord is a chat based, chat voice based communication user. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm out. <laughs> right, thank you, Stray. I appreciate that. That was my assumption as well, but it was good to get a confirmation on that. Appreciate it. battery. I'll get the extra screws for this. I've got a fair few spares of this particular model. I'm going to start doing phones, but competitor uses junk parts, so I'm going to price myself high and advertisers use quality parts. Yep, that's 
pretty much my strategy to Mark and as you've heard pretty much all of us say and I'm sure you know anyway yourself it causes you less drama in the long run anyway speaking of which I got all my new parts today for my phones after I did my RMAs now you may wonder why I didn't get a cash payout it's because I couldn't it was store credit and I'm fine with that I'll just indirectly make my savings by not having to spend the money uh, when I do order my next parts. Well, I've, I've got a full stock now anyway. The only thing I don't carry at the moment is the 7 and the 6S Plus. Uh, I should... sorry. I just realised I don't know what this person has got on their screen. All I know is they're running Windows 10 by the looks of it which means it's probably going to want to install 1703 soon yeah, right. that's good enough let's see if that works and I have no idea what their password is well that's not a problem. We'll just do the update and restart. There are a plethora of undercutters for phones, PC repairs, refurbished sales, virus removal, any jackass with a computer hangs up a shingle in this town. <laughs> But the population of one and a half million, well, yeah, you've at least got you've at least got a number of people to pick from there. So no power drills using this repair. No, nope, unfortunately, it's not a Lewis board short repair. I didn't get to see him use the drill. I was upstairs making my coffee with my wireless headphones on, and I could just hear him doing it. It seemed like it went kind of all right. I did see when he powered it up, when he was putting the power through to find the short and um, I straight away sort of, I said on the comment, I said that's a board short, not a cap short but I mean he would have known that anyway but he was just hoping it was going to be a cap short Stray 77, I'm trying to use AVR Dude to write an Arduino to write the Arduino bootloader to a dead micro mini MOST of oh, 328p and I keep getting a verification error content mismatch of the ISP wired directly to the pins any chance you've blown the 328? I have had in the past where I've accidentally damaged my AVRs and they're like half work like a it seems like it should be functioning I might get a terminal on it or something like that but then when I try to flash them or whatever they just don't work properly and I think just something inside of them goes pop and that's the end of them nothing you can do at least they're cheap okay I mean a 328 isn't the cheapest but uh, it's still comparatively cheap I felt sorry for Lewis when I saw him this morning. I guess he'd been lying out in the sun or something too much. Poor guy. It's not much fun when you go on a holiday and you come back wounded. I tell you where to get the quality iPhone screens. Yeah, well, that's that's a big question that a lot of people ask. And even when you do find quality ones, you'll usually find they will change them up on you if you're a regular buyer. So if they see that you're consistently buying quite a few, they're going to start slipping in duds or lower quality ones because they think, hey, this guy's a regular, he doesn't, he doesn't care. We can get away with it, offloading a few. Power tool repair by Rossman. The YouTube experience. Reserve your tickets now. $100 US dollars. <laughs> Should do that in a Jessa voice. The Jester stream was good today too. I had a good laugh on that one. I 
I can't even remember. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they were going off about the uh, escapades of their youthful days and Jess being caught down at the phone booth of the pier with, what was the guy's name? Clay with his bottle of beer. Yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Yes, well, Apple makes the decent screens, but unfortunately the clones aren't always so decent. ZX8401. I've avoided using Win10. I like an OS with less malware and spyware. <laughs> it's getting a bit like um, Emacs in the sense of, well, it's a nice operating system, but it'd be nice if I had a text editor. So, unfortunately, the Unix people only get that one. CryJ2000. Too late, my balls have long since dropped. <laughs> you yeah, the things we have to hear from each other. Hey, Ronnie Rasmussen. I'm not sure I've seen you post before. Oh, there you are, further up there. Fast, stable, it doesn't require many resources, it will lag the system. So yeah, it seems to be a good platform they made. Yeah. I gotta admit, I'm mostly going over to 10 with a lot of my clients, um, simply because they're picking up new equipment or new machines, and I am finding that Windows 7 is now starting to s drop the ball a bit. With uh, understandably, you know, they're not writing the drivers for them. So, yeah, I've sort of put people up to Windows 10. I put something like Classic Shell on there. Um, turn off every damn thing I can. The one that a lot of people get caught out on is that uh, sharing of updates with other computers in the network. I really wish Windows had not made that a default, uh, particularly out here where we, a lot of the people are on mobile phone plans for data and it only takes a Windows machine to be left on and they can consume their month's worth of data just overnight because that machine is sharing out its updates. I could have said, I can't do a Jessa voice, I'm not entirely, no, 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 no. <laughs> Where's my... <laughs> Oh, come on. Now, the trouble is I don't know how well this battery is charged, so I can't just pull the plug out and relocate it to another part of the room. Stray 77 just don't know how to tell if it's dead without swapping it out, and I don't have another QFN on hand. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's always the fun. I know when I was doing a lot of the prototyping with the radio control stuff, any time I bought a chip or something, I'd end up usually buying, always buy three. Um, one to blow up, one to replace it with, and one as a spare for the future. So, couldn't always afford that, but I uh, certainly tried. But of course then you get the situation where you do end up using those other ones, and then you're left back to zero again. Greg M, I think Create Updates allows you to specify that wire connection is a meter connection like M Ah, okay, I'll have to look into that, Greg, because yes, that is a something that I was dealing with just today. Uh, I knew the person was... Um, they get their broadband through the mobile, and it goes into one of those 3G, 4G routers, and then they plug into that with their Ethernet. So it was a problem trying to set that to not... Uh, do the updates through it. So if they have done that, that would be a useful addition for a change. No battery button charge check LEDs. Of course not. Come on, this is a HP. I mean, god damn, it's not a Mac. It's, it's not even a Dell. And besides, it would be on the bottom of the laptop. I'm not going to flip the laptop over. <clears throat> I will have to mention to him about this it kind of looks a little bit like Starship Enterprise or a squished um, Space Invader but I'll make mention of it I'm not sure how they did that because I can't feel any chip in the glass 
Yeah, who knows. I put Win7 on machines with our no S. After turning off all the CPU racing features, it works nicely. Yeah, I mean, it does. If you can put Win7 on and all the hardware is supported properly, um, I think the biggest gripe at the moment I have with Win7 is sometimes with the trim support on solid state drives. I mean, as far as I know, it should be properly supported, but I get some weird quirks every now and then. Ah, so someone does make a white laptop that isn't a Mac. Hello, Station 240. I quite like the Toshiba white uh, satellites. They're not too bad. The HP ones I'm not so much of a fan of, but then I'm not a fan of HP. A lot of that is... Well, there's two reasons for that. One is the, the oddity of their designs. Yeah, it's all intertwined. It's very annoying. And the other is because they packed everything in a bit too tight, come somewhere around here, they just cook and die. Windows is updating. Come back tomorrow, maybe Thursday. You know, I'm thinking I might... Yeah. Surely it's going to reach down here. Now, if this happens to just die, I'll try not blame you guys. I just realised I haven't even got the underside plate on it. Oops. I'll put it on my rubbish bin. So, if nothing else, it's closer to home. Alright. Reroute that. That's not going to hold. Okay. I'll take my stick back. All right. Top right of your shelf. No, that's not enough space. Could fall off and it might get hurt. All right, we're going to get the second one now. This was also a machine from the other night, and it also needed a power cord. So I'll just go get that now. Thank you very much for that, Powell. Yep, I'm good now. Is this another... This is another... Another hinge job. I thought this one didn't need hinges. Oh no, this is the one with the good hinges. That's right. Uh, well, that's one way to get everyone talking. Cut the audio. <laughs> Should use that trick more frequently. What am I doing? Power cable on this one. 
Anyway, as I was saying, does every, anyone remember the young chap that got modded on Lewis Rossman's stream that turned out to be perhaps a little eager for the job? Uh, can't remember his name. Some, something Bacon or something like that. That was a fun couple of times. If you if you did a bit of moderation the way he didn't like it, he would uh, reverse your moderation and then reapply his. And uh, yeah, ah, that was a bit of unnecessary fun. Hundred lifetime licenses selling for a hundred dollars each for customers buying up. Uh, what was that licenses for? Was it Windows Seven? <laughs> I do keep Windows 7 licenses here uh, in the sense that if someone gives up their laptop I tend to snare the license. I think it's just good business sense. Which way up do you go? <laughs> nope. Made a man, yes, you did. Ah, and I just succeeded in pushing those probes into those holes. Excellent. Please note there are no innuendos on this channel. <laughs> oh, this fecked up piece of... now I remember what... Again, another situation where I really... would be so much better off if I did not have to wait a week between doing these. It simply serves you no good brain-wise. Come on, there you go. Oh, 100 likes of malware bytes. Okay. Now, I signed up to be a distributor of their stuff. I do find it very useful. Though I must admit, I tend not to run it as a constant process. It's sort of more of a once in a blue moon, I'll run it to flush out things. And then I have... Either I stick with the Windows Defender... Oh, for flip's sake, are you kidding me? You just want to keep falling off that? You little so-and-so. Oh, we've got a better screwdriver here, someone that actually wants to hold. Hey, wait a minute, at least it's not as dramatic as dropping a bolt down the uh, down the coolant recesses of an engine block necessitating you to remove the whole bottom end. Yeah, that's never any fun. Okay, what are you getting? Oh, that's what you're getting snagged on. Honestly, I'm beautiful. People complain about MacBooks, really, in terms of serviceability. PCs are a whole different world of hell. It's like, hi, you want to be a PC repair person? Just check your insanity in over there and leave it. But unfortunately, it's the nature of the market here. Um, unlike, say, Lewis's more, how shall we say, effulent, no, effulent, then again, that may actually be oddly correct. Um, 
market, the one here, people think twice about even spending $400 on a cheap PC. Like, oh, I don't know. That's like six crates of beer, man. What are we going to do? We're not going to have any beer for like two weeks if we have six, don't get our six crates. We can't do that. It'll be the end of the world. Yeah. Hey, Joshua. Nice to see you. What have we got? We've got 32 people in here. Wow, 32 people who have nothing better to do than to watch me cuss and swear at an ancient laptop that has reasonable hinges. I suppose that's fair. Right, let's have a good power connector in here. Uh, anyone want to recommend that I power it up before I do much else? Oh wow. This has actually got a simple power switch on it. That's a shocker. I need a Toshiba power brick. Or an Asus power brick. Either will do. Let's go find one. Uh, my way. Any interest into getting MacBook logic board repair? Uh, I already do do them. There's just not a lot of them around here. It's It's pretty much as simple as that. It's not a choice thing, it's just a case of they're not around. I did a MacBook Air the other week, and I was happy to do that. Um, it was a fairly simple repair. The uh, clock chip traces are just simply corroded away by some very localised corrosion, which that was the more unusual thing. So nothing up the top, nothing obvious. Uh, flipped it over and right on the clock chip, it was just etched away. So like I said, I'm not sure what did that. It was almost like a caustic bug went in there and just decided to end its life. That there weren't there wasn't any sort of carcass or anything. It was just anyway. Needless to say, after fixing that up, which was a bit of drama because I've only got this uh two and a half times magnification lamp. Um and these were 0201 parts and I had to run new traces uh, it worked and so I got my money which is about 300 bucks here and I was happy uh, bench power supply laptop no nah, I've got so many bricks here I just need to go get one it's like just over the other side oh there they are they're all on the floor piled up might be a second Alrighty, they were all a bit tangled up. When I was cleaning up the workshop, I was starting to get frustrated with all these different devices everywhere. So I just started throwing things in a pile. Come on, yeah! Gotcha. Let's see how much hum I get through that now. Will I get a lot of hum? Bzzz, probably. No lights. Where are my tweezers? Ah. 
There we go. We got a fan spin. Oh, Ronnie, I completely understand what you're saying about... Oh, crap, now I know I, um, that board was a little hard to sit down. I should just rename this the Comedy Channel, or something to that effect, because quite honestly, the mistakes I'm making are truly comical. There we go. If my good friend was here, he would be just dying from laughter. Okay, let's go. Come on, you can do it. There you go. Yes, anyway, as I was saying, Ronnie, uh, that is also my problem too. I have a very bad habit of, I'll get up in the morning and no beautiful device, that's good, that's what we want. I will deal with my kids, the cats, and then I will go searching for a stream to sit down and watch because I don't want to have to face life. <laughs> That's interesting, this has actually got a spot of uh, flux or something here and the solder joint's a little different. That's unusual, it's like being touched up. I wonder if they did that in factory. Yeah, maybe there was a very small defect and they decided, oh, we'll just uh, fix that up on the fly here. I don't know. Do you, Did Toshiba ever do that? Okay. This machine will get resold locally. Uh, it's a Core i3. I'm probably only a third generation or something like that. But it's still perfectly good. It'll make a good... Um, internet and editing, yeah, just uh, office editing type laptop. And they're quite serviceable. It has integrated... Um, are you not it has integrated graphics, so it's not going to die anytime soon. Hey, fine. Nice to see you. So, and Castle Computers works better when the screen's plugged in. Yes, that's right, Castle, it certainly does. And an Englishman in Brazil. Hello there. Yeah, quite a few people contacting me from Brazil, interestingly. Um, it was sad that I was unable to uh, continue selling a lot of my stuff to Brazil. Unfortunately, I just had far too many occurrences of stuff going missing. Give it in. Mm. Okay, uh, you guys are going to have to excuse me a bit. I can hear the dogs going off at the moment out the back and a little bit of a different tone to usual, so... I'll just go find out what's going on. Like I said, not my dogs, but I still got to check.
Uh, sorry about that. Unfortunately, it is something that I need to constantly monitor at this hour of the morning. And I've now just uh, locked up everything. So at least I know the cats are safely inside. And so if there is any noises out there, uh, I can be fairly sure it's not pertaining to them. Right, that's what I thought I was missing. Six mil screw. Where are you? That'll be you. That's a long screw for that. We're probably going to have a situation where we may end up with one screw spare overall. I can't guarantee that's not going to happen. We'll call it uh, performance enhancement. Reducing the weight. I mean, I prefer if I don't end up with any left over, but uh, yeah, it happens. And 90% of the time I will go back and rectify the situation but we'll see oh for goodness sake this this FPC is just off at a slight angle and as a consequence it doesn't... there we go, it goes in. Ah. Let's see... <laughs> just rename the channel to Laptops vs. Lawnmowers. <laughs> it's a good idea. I've seen factory fixes, they always look like crap. Oh, what? Even though I didn't care to mess with hardware for ages, Paul did earn himself a new subscriber. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. Just had a customer bring in an i5. If she said it was so old, oh, I wiped it and sold it for 165. Oh, not bad, not bad. Free computer and phone recycling? Yes, I do that a fair bit here. Need my laser anti-dog control. Yeah, well, these ones fortunately weren't at the uh, front patio today. Or now. But yeah, uh, those ones last night, they're from around the corner, I've noticed. So, uh, we do have a significant dog issue in this town. The funny thing is, like, you propose to resolve it, or say a dog gets caught, uh, and obviously you really want to be punishing the owners for their... Well, not so much punishing, I suppose, but at least not the first time. You want to simply go, look, you know, your, your dog's getting out, or did get out. Uh, please be more mindful. But as soon as somebody's dog gets caught, then everybody turns on the dog control here and says, why did you do that? It costs so much to get our dog out. It's not fair. You're terrible people. But then as soon as the dog is in their yard, tearing up their own pets and everything like that, well, of course, naturally, the it's all the other way around. So, yeah, typical. I'm sure you all know that sort of behaviour. Fortunately, they are introducing new legislation here, or they have introduced new laws, rather, which states that if your dog has puppies, you have to register as a breeder, and they're all tracked right from the start. Which is excellent, because we had a lot of problems with people just thinking, oh, oh, I'll breed some dogs and I'll get some money. And so they have this easy money mentality and then you get seven or eight pups and they sell three or four. What do you think they do with the other ones? Yeah. Usually things that we don't want to have to think about, particularly around here. So, hopefully, with the introduction of this law, though it will be difficult to police it directly, 
uh, we should see a redu reduction in unwanted litters, things like that. And as for cats, what they're going to be doing is slowly bringing about the laws that you have to have a suitable enclosure to keep them contained within your own property, which I think is what they need. Um, stops the cats causing trouble with other people and stops other people doing ungodly things to the cats. And around here, I mean a country town, there are some really nasty people. Uh, we've, we've had people go out of their way in their full drives or whatever, jump the curb and everything like that in the car to run down a cat because it was on the uh, roadside, uh, on the footpath. So things like that do happen here and it's quite disturbing and unfortunately there's not much you can really do about it. So yeah, people need to keep their cats suitably enclosed, or all their pets suitably enclosed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, cheeseburgers! Right, uh, no, I was, yes, just out trying to work out what the dogs were barking at. Oop, looks like I've missed a bunch here. Streamlining for maximum portability, yes. <laughs> What's the oddest thing you've been asked to repair? Um, I received a... It's probably not odd. Well, there's two things. One of those um, positive pressure uh, breathing apparatus that you have for... You know, if you sort of choke up when you sleep. So they were a little weird to work on. But... The other one was trying to recover data from a photo frame and the, you know, the logic frame yeah, where they you load up some photos on there and it rotates and displays them. Um, unfortunately, that's one project I have not finished, but the whole plan was that I would... I got the... What happened? I got the data off the flash chips that were in there, but unfortunately there was no mapping information, though it is thankfully in the clear, There's no, it hasn't been XORed or anything like that, but we don't have a sequence uh, pattern to work with. So my plan was, I've got the raw data, uh, my plan was I'll write a JPEG decoder implementation and then you can always easily find the header of the JPEG. That, that's the easy part. So you find that block. And then with the information you have in the first block, it's usually enough that you can then go and f pick a second block based on your minimum error probability. So you, you try all, your diff all the blocks that you have available and you find the one that has the minimum error uh, count when you decode it. Yeah, because if you decode a block of data that isn't valid, it usually throws things out of range, or it just doesn't make sense, and it tends to um, cast errors. So that was the theory. Unfortunately, I never quite got to finish that. But I still have it, and um, yeah, there's imp the person's apparently got important pictures on there. I don't know what's since happened to them. They did eventually tell me they found they had another copy somewhere. So I still want to finish that project because I think it could be useful for other things because there are plenty of times where you get a broken USB stick and no one's got a decoding map for it. Alright, I'm missing a couple of screws uh, and these are not screws that were in here originally. Uh, let's see, Crajo, strays get neutered here, city ordinance, animal hostels strongly encourage a practice as well, unless your animal has pedigree, yes, uh, you repaired a vibrator, oh my goodness, yeah, that must have been a pretty good one, because, you know, I mean, most people just toss them and buy a new one, um, Crajo, I'm assuming when the strays get neutered, they re-release them into the wild, as it were, <clears throat> um, as, as I understand it, it has a good effect on the rest of the population because they can, they're still competing for resources, for food, but they're not replicating or breeding, I should rather say. 
and so henceforth the population tends to shrink whereas if you simply eliminate the animal then the resources become available and the population just expands again to uh, compensate Zedek. Zedek says how sad I don't own a cat or dog but I don't think people here hate them yeah it's a mentality thing here a lot of the hate towards particularly towards cats in a country town uh, they make up their excuses for it like oh, they killed wildlife and things like that or they, they shit in the um, the yard or whatever but the same actually applies for dogs I think a lot of people fail to realize that around here dogs will um, catch possums, they'll catch small kangaroos, wallabies, they'll catch birds um, they'll, they'll tear into anything they can get their hands, so snakes, lizards, you name it so they seem to forget that when they're talking about bringing up the whole wildlife thing and yes, cats do kill quite a lot of wildlife uh, it distresses me considerably which is why I'm glad I do have mine in the enclosures it sort of limits the degree in which they can inflict that sort of unnecessary damage uh, but overall it's just a really primal yeah, disgusting hatred once they get in their mind that they don't like that thing they really do go out of their way to you know, do whatever they can to kill off these creatures and it'd be fine in a degree so to speak if it was done quick and humane but you know these fuckers they're not that sort of people yeah, they're the sort that will go out of their way to torture creatures just simply because they don't like them I will not say what I would like to do to those people they try to adopt them out or they get euthanized oh wow okay they're trying to go to not kill the environment right. yeah. it's a tough call because like I said if you do just keep removing the cats from the environment uh, yeah, the population just keeps expanding with the you know to fill the resource availability. Uh, I don't know where I read the paper, but it was on a um, some sort of long-term trial, and they found that by putting sterile animals back out into as strays, it had a overall positive effect. Man with hammer attacks police and has been shot down. Is this in Paris now? Oh man, that's really bad. The, the whole Europe situation is getting a bit crazy. No doubt there'll be a fairly significant backlash and things will just get shut back down. Yeah, it was an experiment in uh, being nice humans, but unfortunately there's enough not nice humans out there to ruin it for us all. Let's see. Quite an expensive vibrator. Wore a glove, of course, yeah. Plenty of sanitizer, yeah, and ultrasonic. <laughs> oh, man. I have seen some of the controller boards for those things. Um, they do seem interesting. It's just that whole industry is quite interesting, quite profitable, too. But I think I'll just stick to fixing. Uh, photo frames and MacBooks, <laughs> but that's definitely different. That's one for the books, yeah. Michael Leatherwood, I have a picture frame like that. Loaded pictures on it. Now SD card that was used to load it was lost in a fire. So, yeah, uh, and there's there's no way you can really get them off there directly. So at least not that I'm aware of. So you're in the same situation where you need to take the chip off, the RAM chip, the flash chip, um, read out the raw data and then find a way to piece it back together. So, you know, um, I will probably make a video at some point when I do get around to doing that software up. Like I said, I do think it's got its uses in spite of the fact that most of the flash sticks that you have these days are also... Um, they have a mask over the data as well, an XOR mask for encryption sort of thing. Uh, I don't know why they bother really doing that. Niche, yeah. I, I think around in this town it's not something I want to consider. 
there's only about three and a half to five thousand of us in this town. I pretty much know too many people already. I mean, what they do, that's fine. I'm with that, but I don't want to have to be handling it. <laughs> uh, you watch Chris Long will send me a giant purple monster or something, like he did to Lewis. They don't want to leak the designs. What's it? Oh, night vision goggles. Oh, okay. So much poxy resin. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, anyone try repairing Commodore 64 power bricks, things like that? Those things were just potted. And you couldn't get into them at all. Or at least the ones I remember. I just got to get some more screws. Ah, gotcha. Whenever I've got a laptop that gets committed to death, I usually will always keep its screws. Right, let's pull one of these out as a confirmation. Dogs are high maintenance. Yeah, I think cats are fairly high maintenance too, but in different ways. You know, dogs, dogs do have that. Oh, I love you, I love you, uh, please tell me you love me, sort of thing. It's uh, very demanding in that respect. Whereas cats are sort of like, you wish you were loved by me. And, yeah, different personalities go with different creatures. And I've always been a cat person. Right from a little kid, I would somehow manage to have them always follow me home. And of course, naturally, I couldn't keep them. And then my parents would tell me fibs about how they'll be fine. So they went to the farm or stuff like that. Dear God. Yeah. I think back. That's the trouble with having a memory that uh, goes back too far. Is that you recall all these events in your life where you know you were lied to and then you basically relive the situation that you cannot fix. Then again, that's probably applies to most people. I hope that was the right screw. Mm -hmm. I probably should find the ones with the Hewlett Packard too since there were a few missing in there. Alright, that's looking good. Uh, I'm missing two panels. I'm sure I'll have them floating around somewhere. Let's just give it a double check, boot it up with the Linux stick. I do have some 120 gig solid state drives. I will probably use one of them in this. I'd much rather give a person a solid state drive in a machine like, yeah, a second hand machine than a spinning rust drive. Okay, we're good. Number two, two, two. Okay. Right, yeah. Uh, let's have a look at this. You don't want to put a vibrator under the scope, it moves all over the place. <laughs> Uh, Mike Lazan, I know you use DD Rescue. Is that an image program? I have not really run Linux except Linux Lite. Would like to see a video on how you do the process. Uh, Mike, basically, DD Rescue is simply a bit for bit copying program, and you can feed it either a device or a file, anything really, as long as it's a block device, usually, like a file, um, a hard drive, a flash stick, anything like that. Um, it has its advantage in the fact that it, um, the algorithms, it, oops, that bench was a little short there, um, as it encounters bad spots on the media that you're trying to recover, it jumps ahead and tries different patterns to come back and essentially maximize the amount of data you can recover as quickly as possible and minimize the risk of losing valuable data before the drive gives up. 
Uh, I should do a proper tutorial on DD Rescue in general. I do have a few videos where I have done a DD Rescue process on hard drives. So it is the tool itself is a good start and in the end when you combine it with scripts and other tools um, you can make a fairly comprehensive method of recovering data from drives that have quirky personalities due to the way they're dying so, uh, so that, that's really um, the most of it I have all my other little bits and pieces like I've got the programmable relay switch and then I've got a uh, what the what is that oh, some weird crusty thing and I've just touched it with my finger easy fix but yeah I, I should do a more general tutorial on that there are but there are commercial suites that can do all that sort of work for you uh, you know PC3000 um, does a fair bit of that sort of thing. Spinrite, I think. Although I can never decide if Spinrite is malware or properware. Did the laptop fill out its organ donor card? Yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they don't get to have a say. Yeah. They get committed one way or another. This is more like Logan's run. After that laptop's 28 years old, it gets reutilized. <laughs> that was dried sneeze, I'm sure. Oh man, I'm glad I used the alcohol on that. Oh dear. Love your organization of parts. Yeah, I, uh, these containers and similar different sizes, but they all nest in with each other. They frequently come on special down at the local supermarket and I'll go along and buy another 10 or 20 and every time I buy another 10 or 20 I use them up so quickly I think because what happens is once I've got them I realize oh you know I could organize these parts into their own container or these parts uh, it's a bit different for me because I'm not typically an organized person I tend to as you can already look from just looking around here I do get a little bit scatterbrained and I leave a wake of trash behind me as I go forward on a particular topic. Um, one thing I have to learn to do is during the process try and organize things and then also when I'm finished go back and clean up before I do the next job. You'd think at like my mid 40s I would have sorted that out by now but nope, 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 nope. Still working on it. Uh, I'd be interested to see if this has got Wi-Fi. Well, you're not going to be able to tell me. Yes, it is embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah. NM app. What is on my keyboard? What are you? Oh, you a bit of fluff. We do have Wi-Fi. And the password is... Nine 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 one. So if you're ever in the area, you can use that password. And then my router will say someone who isn't authorized has just joined up. <laughs> hey Amy, nice of you to join. Let's see. Cryjay, as far as I know, spin right by Gibson Research is a legitimate tool. Oh, all right. Never used them because I became aware of them several years ago in a computer publication. I think DNS Bench is theirs too. DNS Bench? Okay, what is that like? Do performance checking on DNS systems? I use small fishing tackle boxes. They're dollar fifty. I have about 30 of them. They work great. Yeah, if you've got the smaller things, then yeah. Um, you may have seen one of my other videos when I'm doing electronics building. Uh, I've got all those little flip lid uh, cells. So, uh, Stray77 says, if I have 10 projects going, I have 10 messes going. Yep, yep, yep. That's right on the mark. And that's unfortunately what I'm like, which is why I have three rooms in this house to do this work in and 
five benches and they're always messy. Oh well. Let's see if YouTube works. We all have our daily struggles. Oh look, apparently I'm on YouTube. How amusing. Okay, well that's working, so the screen seems pretty good. Um, there's not much else I can do on this at this point. Uh, I need to find those two panels that are missing. Uh, what else? I have to get the screws for that HP. I suppose I should check to see what the temperatures are like. Apparently we're in zero. And, uh, we're in our high 40s. And I don't have my burner program. Is Pianov here? No. Hey Loom23. Mess is a gas that expands to fill the available space. That's a good analogy there, Motorman. My lab is a trash heap. Yep. Yeah. It, I wonder if... <coughs> excuse me. I wonder if people who have perfectly clean work spaces and all that are legitimate techs or whether they're just pretending to be a tech. Um, now don't get me wrong, I look at like say Lewis Rossman's desk and things like that he just seems like he's actually got the cleanup process sorted but I don't think of him as having an immaculate desk sort of thing. Now I'm talking about the ones where you look at them and it's as if they've been set up by a marketing crew going to do an advertisement on office spacing or something like that. Uh, a mile of land cables, servers, switches, a lot. So you live in a um, networking cabinet. <laughs> DNS bench is to check DNS resolver strength reliability. It's how I discovered my ISV default had dead backbone and the other had shoddy performance. Switched to an alternate DNS. Ah, speaking of which, I finally set up my um, forwarding DNS, forwarding caching DNS, sorry. As in, well, I guess it is just strictly a forwarding in that case. It will collect the requests, it will remember the answers, but it won't actually do the resolving itself. Greg M. Yeah, I have SpinRite. I've used SpinRite in the past on hard drives, but it has not been updated for ages, so I cannot handle GPT formatted drives. Oh, jeez, good. Have to bring up Lewis Rossman's flux. Uh, here we go. Uh, I keep a tube always on hand for just those special days. I haven't used a lot of it. Maybe uh, that's about two and a half centimeters worth. I suspect that's going to increase once I get my microscope here. Where don't testing uh, yeah. messy workspace, creatively tidy, efficient. Yeah, so that's the trouble. It's like um, I'd like to have clean workspaces because I know it does make work easier. It's more efficient. You trip over less things. It's just yeah, because you sort of jump from one project and then you're like straight into the next project, and you've got so much. You're so anxious to do it that. Uh, yeah, you sort of think cleaning. Pfft, yeah, leave that for the last. Have you tried PF Sense? Um, no, not that I can think of. If the desk is too clean, then they're seriously suffering OCD or don't do any work. It's a set of drapes. <laughs> well, they have two desks and the other one's a rubbish dump. Yeah, that's the other trick. Yeah, yes, Lewis is a good guy. I will definitely say that. I mean, I've never met him. I don't really know what he's like off stream or anything like that, but I do get the impression at the very least that he certainly is very hard work and he knows what he wants. He, you know, he's a producer, he's a positive type person as opposed to a leech, a draining force or anything like that. And I dare say a lot of us, well, okay, I can't really speak for a lot of us, but certainly for myself, it sort of reawakened my uh, desire to get back into this sort of market. 
Which is kind of funny because often, you know, older people will look down on younger people and sort of go, oh, you know, you stupid young people, you don't know what it's like after so many years, you get weary and tired of this crap and, you know, stop telling us that we're being lazy or whatever. But the way Lewis does it, I think his strength is the fact that he doesn't sort of like push, uh, try to force you into something, he just sort of leads the way and makes it enticing to follow and to try and duplicate what he's doing or at least have a shot. And then when he takes the time to actually say hello and acknowledge that you exist and congratulate you on your first MacBook repair or something like that, it gives you that boost to keep on going. So yeah, my hat's off to him. Uh, definitely someone who is making a great deal of changes in this world. Chris Long, you're a leech. Oh my god, you're a leech. <laughs> Let's see. Would I shake his Lewis's hand? Yeah, that that's one of those um, quantum duality issues. I don't really know. I'd probably stand there, and I fear I would fail the test. Uh, maybe I'd stalk the store from a half a block up with a long-range telescope or something like that. But then I'd probably get taken out by the police or something like that. But anyway, yeah, it'd be difficult. I would probably only ever visit or see Lewis if it was under his um, offering. Like if he said, come over and pop in and say hello, um, make a fool of yourself on live stream, and then I'll say, oh, I've already done that enough anyway. Uh, maybe he'll give me a Dremel and I can uh, drill mindlessly into a board at 11 o'clock at night as a complete stranger. Ah, Spencer, food, yes. Uh, Paul cusses as me off and <laughs> It's okay, Chris. You know that's the game we play. I don't even know how we got into that state. I owe you a lot of thanks as well, actually. Because you keep kicking me and telling me to do certain things and accept certain things or ask for certain things. And even when I'm like, no, 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 no. And somehow or another you organise it that it's forced upon me and oh well. And now because of that I will be getting some equipment that I've long since needed. Luan Treasury, I think he has a little more respect for you than that. Well, it's hard to say. Um yeah, there, there's put it this way, I'm not willing to put that to chance. Um because often there can be people in life that you admire or you you like what they've done and things like that and in many ways you don't want to sort of ruin that it's kind of like no, do not go there Paul I was going to talk about relationship but no needs to say sometimes it's best to stay many thousands of miles apart Oddly, I have a feeling, although I could well be wrong with this, I have a feeling I'd probably get along with Jessa quite a bit more. Uh, I would perhaps be a little bit scared of uh, debating with Lewis. I mean, the guy's got his arguments all so nicely lined up and he knows his stuff when he gets into it. Um, whereas Jessa, um, she knows her stuff too, but in a different kind of way when she comes to debating things. You know, she's got more of that academic uh, type personality, which I must say is more along where I come from. So I guess I'm being the slightly uh, cautious person and going with what I know. Uh, would I hug Jessa? Ah, no, that could be a little weird. So, um, I've got, yeah, I don't have any qualms against Jess or anything like that, but I'd want to know her for a fair bit before I did anything like that. Uh, I am particularly not into touching people or having people touch me, unless it's my wife. 
you know, like even with uh, family, things like that. Uh, unless I've known them for a long time, it's, it's like, a, oh god, I've been hugged. <laughs> Let me go have a shower and ice it properly. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Dremel guy was hilarious and scary at the same time. I agree, Mother Man. I was freaking out that night. I was watching that live stream. And I was like, he's not going to let him in. He's not going to let him in. And then Lewis gives him the Dremel. I'm like, what the freaking hell's going on? He's just like, you crazy? I think, yeah. Sometimes your brain takes a vacation when it really shouldn't. Hi, hi, 217. Oh, I got a Wix ad. Neat. Cool. Sad panda. Let me catch up here. Chris, you have done some real hard repairs. You have bags of patience. I'll definitely give you agree to that. Um, yeah, your persistence on some of those things. Did you ever solve that one where I think it was it was one of the first sort of series? I say series because it seemed like it went on for a while. Uh, I think it was a charging issue or something like that. It was an odd one. And you'd changed so many damn things on that board, and it still wasn't working. And Jessup was giving you crap about it too. Uh, let's see, Chris Long says Lewis is a pretty nice guy. It takes him a little while to warm up to new people. Can't blame him, to be honest. But he's Lewis. If you ever want an engaging conversation with someone who listens to your argument, okay. Yes, I'm not surprised that Lewis would be that way inclined. Um, uh, I mean, especially now. It's like, you know, he's got, what, nearly 300,000 followers. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of people that want to behave like they know you. And, um, yeah, you sort of like, no thanks, and just keep on walking. <laughs> Would it achieve what Lewis recommends and achieve what Jekas, Jessa recommends, not Jekka? I'm sure they both have their place. Yes, I will agree with you there. They actually do have their places. Um, I find Lewis's flux is, funnily enough, very good for the sort of work he does where it's slightly larger and the slight tackiness of it and durability under heat. See, uh, It works well with doing things like laptop, MacBook type repairs, macro scale but we'll, we'll call it um, mini scale electronics and then the quick flux uh, which Jesse uses and I also believe Jason of SDS uses it too or at least a similar type it has that um, lowered viscosity which gets it to run around a little more without as much heat but on the downside is as you do ramp up the heat it does seem to uh, degenerate quicker so, yeah, I, I agree. You end up needing both. I missed a spot. I probably did. I'll throw the whole thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. Thanks, bag of chips. Uh, let's see. What have we got? Yeah, we've lost a couple. That's okay. People have got things to do in their day. iPad Air? No, it never charged. Oh, well, that's no good. But, I mean, you persisted. You persisted a long time with that. Yeah. View on flux pens? Um... Not really applicable, I think, for a lot of what we're doing because the stuff, it's kind of like trying to put a... <clears throat> the nib on those things are huge. Are you talking about the ones with the felt sort of uh, nib and you can draw down the flux? Or are you talking about like the single drop release pens so you can get those oil pens and they just give you one drop at a time? Uh, if, it, if it's the felt type nib, then no, I don't really find that much use. But again, the other thing is, I think this is the other thing, um, everybody has their way of doing things. And if you can get the work done with something and it's not ridiculously out of the way or difficult doing it that way, then I, I don't see any problem with people picking and choosing like that. Gotta have my water, I'm drying out. Lewis has Jason for hugs. <laughs> ah, Jason. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder whether Jason 
um, approves or disapproves of the fact that Lewis does so much YouTube work. Not that Lewis really cares, cares, or not that anything like that, but it's just amusing. Sometimes focus is gone. Yeah, seems okay. It might have been maybe a drop in packets or something, and it dropped back to a lower resolution. I need a website. You need Wix. Yeah. I am thinking of moving my web server now into my own network here at home. Uh, at the moment I have it hosted in a virtual server elsewhere and it's a tiny server, it uh, has 10 gigabytes of space for the disk drive and it runs off 256 megabytes of RAM and that's all I ever really need, it does a perfectly fine job and I've got several sites on it but they're all mostly, they're all mostly static pages uh, so I thought I might bring that into a demilitarized zone inside the um, router here and run it on a Pi or something like that. So I figure, what what's the worst that can happen? Okay, they may get out of the Pi and then ruin my network, I guess. Stray77, how does one create a board view file? I've got Gerber files and a picture of schematic for a flight controller. Uh, oh, what flight controller you got there? Is for a quad one? And if possible, I'd like to make a board view of it. Is this doable? I would say the easier option right here is for me to finish writing the um, Gerber type. No, it won't be a Gerber. Uh, is the file... Can you get it as a Eagle format? Eagle PCB. Because the trouble with Gerbers is, is that they are utterly without information regarding the parts that you're dealing with. It's just simply a bunch of polygons and nothing else other than, of course, the nail f uh, drill file, which is slightly different. If you do want to view your Gerbers, it sounds really strange when you say it like that. Uh, in Linux, there's a program called GERBV, just G-R-B-V. It does an excellent job of viewing Gerber files. But if you want to use it as a board view type thing, then you're probably going to have to go back to whatever it was created with. And being a flight controller, it's probably an Eagle or maybe KiCad. Slash dotting would ruin my pie. Yeah, it would probably catch on fire and burn the place down. Thankfully, I don't go for any slash dotting anymore these days. Anyone listen to the Amp Hour podcast? I've heard of the Amp Hour podcast. That's Dave Jones, isn't it? Or someone associated with Dave Jones? I've never listened to it. Regarding the battery tester info reader coming, I am trying to decide what to do. I may have to capitulate and go with a dedicated Coulomb counter uh, gas uh, gauge type chip on the high side. I will only need one chip then and it will give me both the discharge and the charge um, properties all in one hit. The nice thing is it will be because it will be from the one chip and the one sensor there won't be any calibration mismatch. Um, I'll see if I can find a cheaper version because the one that I like to use which I think is the LTC 4150 I think it is that uh, that's about $3.50 or something like that now I've got to look it up uh, that's, a, that's the wrong one mouse up here let's see let's see if I can make sure I don't have anything I'm not supposed to have open open Get rid of that 4chan. No, no. There we go. Alright. Now, the one I'm after. I think it's LC4150. Ah, 
brilliant. I actually got it right. Attack Paris Notre Dame. Oh. oh, that was the Hammer and Police one, was it? No. It's just, yeah, it's just not good. <clears throat> All right, so this is a chip that I've used in the past with uh, lithium packs. Uh, it was for my model aircraft type electronics, and essentially it was the same idea. I wanted to be able to see how much was going in, then how much is coming out, and then obviously if you have a significant difference between those two figures, you know you've got a pack that's really not living up to spec. So it it is simple to use. Um, the hardest thing is probably just simply working out the math behind what each pulse represents in terms of milliamp hour. I'll just see what the cost is. You want a free Chris Long? Oh, it's cheap, not free. <laughs> I hate it when people around here on the local community forum group on Facebook respond to questions that someone will post up I need the cheapest iPhone repair in town and they put me on it and I'm like please don't do that Don't if you see the word cheap do not put me on that I've had to indirectly teach a few people that because I don't want to be the cheapest in town I don't want that word associated with me I may do it economically, but I will not do it cheaply. Otherwise, I'll go, hey bro, hey mate, I heard you can do this cheap, I heard you're a genius, you can do it in like five minutes, it should only take you five minutes, hey, it'd be easy for you, hey? Yeah, I got five bucks here, is that enough? Uh, let's see, well, in 100 quantities, they're actually not so bad, $2.38, Two that's quite tolerable, coming down from 4.11. It's a shame they don't have a 10 unit price break there. 25 is a little bit steep to go for, but they're already down as it is. They were at $6. I suspect the problem could be are they still in production? Hey, Miles. Nice to see you. Doing any screens today? I've got a whole box of them. I've got three screens, they're old iPhone 5 ones, and I have to get new plastic frames for them. They've delaminated off the glass, which you know, just means the sticky tapes or hot glue has come off. Alright. Well, they don't have a warning on here to say do not use for new designs yet. Let's check down the bottom. Might have to search for the words not recommended. Not recommended. Not there. Okay. If you find a part that you want to use, always check to make sure that it is actually still in current production. Yeah, um, a few people do get caught out when they find what they think is a marvellous part and it's slated for um, removal or no longer being no longer in production and so they base their whole design on that and then six months later they can't get any more <sighs> handy's 25 blue oh my god Chris really you're soliciting on my channel unbelievable Indirectly teaching that is that code for send one billion farm. Oh, good god, <laughs> managed to avoid that. Oh, good, one of those. Yeah, we all have those type of people. <laughs> and you get a five cut out of that, out of a hundred for the come on. I believe the pimping situation is the pimp gets the greater portion, so I should be having the 60, Chris will get the 40 if he's lucky. Oh, jeez, go. I don't think I'll send him that, no. <laughs> the stuff that I read on here. I have a bunch more screens, and this is on the stream now too, so well done. 
a bunch more screens all clean, ready to get new glass. But I've just got $6,000 worth of laptops and phones to work with on, so that's my project for the day. So where'd you get $6,000 worth of stuff sent to you? It's like someone just sends you a box full of gear and you've got to sort it out? Or how does that work with you? Fan wrench. what was the total donations the other day? Um, at this point, I'm sitting on... It's just a shy, just a wee shy of um, $1,000 all up. Pardon me which is unbelievably phenomenal. It is certainly not what I was expecting to happen. Um, and as it was, I was already blown away by... There were people who donated it a week or two ago prior to that. And, you know, 25, 50, that sort of thing. And that in itself was already incredibly amazing. So... Yeah, it needs to say, I, I certainly did not expect this one bit and in any way, shape or form. I mean, I thought, like with any, like I said the other night, you know, sure, we pick up some advertising, pick up some small stuff when doing these streams, but things like that, that certainly, I can't even, I still can't even believe it's happened. But I'm very grateful for that because now I can get my other work done and hopefully I'll just sort of keep going with what I do and provide some sort of positive feedback on the community. Uh, let's see. Art of Repair YouTube channel says, store your flux in the fridge overnight, also known as when it's not in use, to slow it from degrading. Same for solder paste. Yeah, the solder paste definitely because um, over time, the balls do tend to start sticking just through uh, cold welding, I suppose, in effect. It becomes clumpy and the flux in it does degrade. But as for you know, your flux, I think if you're not using it fast enough to the point where it does degrade, so like if you haven't used a tube in six months to a year, um, yeah, maybe you should just sort of take that as a loss and just accept that uh, you have to buy new stuff. Consider also the fact that you shouldn't be putting this stuff in with your food fridge anyway. And the cost of electricity to run even like a mini bar fridge is probably far greater than whatever it costs to get a new tube. I suppose it depends on how much electricity costs in your country. Over here we are charged about about 25 US cents per kilowatt hour. And what have we got? Greg M, I use my flux fast enough, it isn't going to go bad well. Yeah, there you go. Uh, by the end of this, you'll need a new YouTube. Oh, no, wow, I'm not trading this one in. I've just got my thousand. Speaking of which, Chris, how far off are you from your thousand? Uh, if anyone isn't... Yeah, I'm going to plug Chris here. <clears throat> if you're not already part of Chris Longstream, uh, consider joining up. He does have some rather interesting, long, protracted repairs, which are very good to watch. And he needs to get to a thousand subscribers as quick as possible. Mm. Oh god, murder man! I was just drinking then, and I read your comment about that wall stick and having a lot of hot weather too. Oh no. Oh, we nearly had water damaged laptop here. Thank you very much. Well done. Yes, they are quadcopter flight controllers on my third build. Stray, which uh, quadcopter controller board is it? Um, I'm in a group on Facebook that and they're doing the little mini ones, are about 20 by 20 mil size. So, uh, 150 to go, Chris. I really hope you get there very soon. Uh, We'll open up the floodgates, perhaps. Sub, sub, sub. Yep. Fans of both y'all. Uh, hope you like long, boring videos. Well, Chris, you know, it's not much different to mine now, is it? Speaking of which, that HP laptop we put down there, I remember now, that was actually doing Windows updates. So, we're going to bring it back up and have a look and see how it is. <sighs> 
kind of felt like then I was doing the cooking show type thing where they go, and here's one we prepared earlier. Uh, so let's just... <sighs> right here, and here is one that we've prepared earlier. This was... Yes. Now, what have we done here? I'm not sure if I'm going for a Julia Stiles there or something. Julia Stiles? No, that's the... Um, God damn it, Julia Stiles is an actress. I'm thinking of the cook. What was that Julia Stiles? Who knows? Uh, I guess I better switch back now. Well, it has booted. Let's see, both came. There we go. And let's plug our. Um, I'm going to be ordering another three or four of these tomorrow. I need more. Okay, Windows update. Restart your PC to finish installing updates. Automatic restart will occur in one day. Well, I say update and restart. Seems like this one's been out in the cold for a long time and hasn't had any updates applied. Uh, Julia Childs, thank you very much, Krajo200, 2000. Sorry, knocked a zero off you there. Yes, yeah, so I watched the movie Julia and Julia, whatever it was. What have we got? Uh, Nays32, revision fi 5 years old, 32 by 32, F103 processor, MPU 6050. I really don't know that one, Stray. Ah. The ones that uh, we're working with are either STM32s or that's for the 32 bit version, funnily enough, or the 8 bits are all running the AVRs. Make a load of troll accounts, everyone, and sub Chris Long of you in the money in no time. Yeah. <laughs> free sprays, free sprays. Oh, yes, that's right. Jessa was saying that your PMIX were failing because of the free spray. Was, uh, accusations, insults, conspiracies. We're going to have to have a uh, magazine now, sort of like, what's that big American... Uh, TMZ, TMZ, that's what I think it is. We're going to have to have kind of like a TMZ for text. And it's like, ooh, let's hear what's going on over at Chris's department today. Alright, figured out what was going on for the bad PMX. So what was going wrong for the bad PMX? What's the Facebook group for the flight controller? Oh, crud, now you've got me. I cannot recall the name. I do it again. I mean, they post multiple times a day. I'm just not in front of my Facebook here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I need this to... I should have shut this down. Because I need to shut it down so that I can put the screws in. Stream went offline for a second here. Ooh, that's no good. Um, showing zero drop frames in spite of it being two hours, which means it's now two. Th Jeez, then I'm supposed to get up in the morning. Well, I am up in the morning. It's just a little too early. Yeah, uh, now it's buffering. I would say that's quite likely YouTube. Because uh, I even when I look. What are you doing? Oh, wrong f flipping mouse. Even though I'm ordering more of these, I am actually going to order a different the model up, it's shaped differently, and everything like that, so that I always will know that I've got the right one for handling my broadcasting machine. Okay, let's have a look. Well, YouTube's reporting nothing. Oh, stream resumes. Stream is continuing. So, okay, if something did happen, I don't know what. So I do apologise. Interesting. Uh, 
Oh, STM F103. Right. Okay. My apologies. I do not know my STM codes. Just flipping on its lid. And the sound is synchronized. Maybe that's what happened to Jabara. Maybe it's like, that's it. We've had enough of you having audio issues. We're going to forcibly resync you. Given that they have the capacity to do so many different things with the videos, live streaming and all that, uh, the power to process everything so well, I'm surprised they don't have lip reading synchronization. Alright. Looks like someone tried to drive a screw through here, which is kind of funny. Because it looks like it should have a screw there, but it does not. So all they've done is chewed through the plastic. Thankfully they didn't get all the way through. Alright, let's look for some more screws. How many of those keyboards can run simultaneously? Mate, man, I suspect probably a dozen without any trouble at all. Uh, they're 2.4 gigahertz units. And uh, they're all uniquely keyed. Actually, I don't know if they're 2.4. I'm, I'm just assuming they're 2.4s. Hmm. But I do know you can have quite a lot of them concurrently. I've had six or seven running here at the same time without any dramas at all. Uh, if you want, you can check it out. It's the K220. There is a link in my description to them on uh, Amazon. Strictly for checking. That's a two and a half, six and a half. Okay. They're all my per laptop when I've been responsible and put them all in at the same time. And this is my trash pit. And so I just have to pick something out of here. And hopefully it won't be so long as to puncture through. Two and a half, six and a half. Yeah, that looks like six. And it fits. At least it's not an iPhone, and I'm not risking long screw damage here. <laughs> oh, that just moved. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right, Chris. I'm pretty sure they are 2.4s. And yeah, they are definitely superior to the old ones. In terms of the functionality, ease of use, and cost balance, I find them to be the best wireless keyboard for this sort of task on the market at the moment. They're compact, which makes them ideal to, you know, just pick up and walk off with. Uh, about the only gripe I do have is that the keyboard only takes AAA, and it works with uh, rechargeable inner loops cells, like nickel metal hydrides, but if you happen to accidentally leave something touching it, it will drain them out real quick. On the other hand, the mouse has double A's, so uh, go figure. Would have been better if that had double A in there. At least that's my view. Uh. Uh, I just need to lock these tabs. Yeah, lock. That's just interlocking the screen hinge uh, bezels together. Okay. Static generating foam pad thrown back. Got to make sure I build up my static, otherwise I won't have enough electrons to power up everything. Right. You're good. Uh, 
There we go. Oh, I think we're almost done. Let's see. Mike, yes, the updates. The first pass and the second pass of updates have finished. So now we're just booting again. Let's see how we go. Mike says, just got a twenty tip for twenty dollar tip for holding home and power on someone's iPhone. That's good, yes. I get people who message me and say, My phone's I dropped my phone, it's gone all black, the screen seems fine. Is it ruined? And I'm like you better bring that around here and let me check that. And yeah, there's a bit of truth in there. It could be a shorted phone for all we know. Because, <clears throat> you know, when you drop the phone, sometimes the caps do get a little upset and decide to turn into resistors. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the time, I have to resist the urge to not do the home lock uh, reset while I'm there talking to them. Uh, it used to be a habit of mine where I just grab the phone and try that while they're there talking to me and then if it pops up they'll go, hey you got to work and that's brilliant and they'd walk off and I wouldn't get anything. So now I yeah, take it into the workshop, try it and then if it does do that I wait 30 minutes or an hour and then call them back and say, hey I've got it running for you. Yeah. I'm sorry I know it seems unethical but I've got to make a buck somehow. Australia 77, I got the K810 Bluetooth because it connects to three devices at once. So I can switch between my PC, my Raspberry Pi, and my Android tablet. Oh, okay, so all three of, your dev all three of the devices you bind to the keyboard. That's neat. That's a good idea. Except if you have all three on at once, then it's interesting. Hey, Spencer, you're back. You solved another global crisis. Ignorance sometimes has a price, yeah. Um, Mike, I agree, it does depend on the customer. Yeah. If it's someone that is a regular, someone who's never given me any real grief, um, you know, someone I know who genuinely supports my business, <coughs> uh, or that I think will, then yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll do it. <sighs> but if it's someone I know who's just flying through, and uh, they just have that attitude or something like that, then yeah, then I'll impose an impose a idiot tax, as it were. I shouldn't call it idiot tax, but you know what I mean. Pixie Wrangler programmer. Uh, thumb detector. Oh, you went to eat food. Anything interesting? Because I'm starving. And every time I'm starving on a live stream, I start to want empanadas again. Empanadas, sorry, empanadas. You switch between devices. You, oh, okay, so... Alright. So what happens is the device waits for the keyboard to send a flag to say you are now the one to be listening to the keyboard. Okay. Amazes me how much the Retina MacBook SSDs are worth. Pain in the ass tax. <laughs> yes. yeah. ID ten tax. ID ten T tax. Yeah. yeah. Some clients, I'm sorry to say, will definitely get an immediate tax on them. The ones that get the highest penalty around here are people who stub their cigarettes out in my yard. Uh, I highly disapprove of that. Or people who continue to smoke right up onto my patio and I open up the door and it's like they're still like, and, pff, pff, uh, you are not allowed to actually do that. Legally, you, I don't believe you can anymore here in Australia, or at least in this state. But that could be a bit of a grey area. Nonetheless, I think it's somewhat impolite to do that. Uh, fine if they do it at home or whatever, away from me. But, you know, you don't know, these people don't know who they're walking to see. Um, 
I could be a person with who's predisposed to asthmatic attacks or whatever, you know. Regardless, it's just something that they shouldn't be doing. So they get a they get a tax for that. And yeah, if they stub out, they also still get the same tax because while they were courteous enough to stub out, they were discourteous enough to litter in my yard. Um, who else gets a tax? People who tell me that they hate cats. They definitely get out there. Yeah. I will also watch the local forums and if I see people indicating that they engage in animal abuse or things like that, they get put on a list. Um, and like I said, this town is comparatively small, so I can keep track of these people. They get put on a list that says I will not do work for them, or if I do do work for them, they get a tax. Okay, ZX, thank you very much for participating. I'll see you next time. Uh, I will need to link you to AV, the Canadian. I do know AV, I just don't really watch his stuff much. Uh, Chris Long, how's the healthcare system there and is the tax worth the benefits? Um, the healthcare system in Australia is very nice. I will definitely say to that. The base level, uh, which we call Medicare, effectively, if you are dying of something, or you, well, if anything really happens to you, you can just go to your GP or the hospital and they will treat you. If it's something that's um, less uh, life-threatening, yeah, maybe you just got an odd growth or something like that, or you have a bit of a weak leg, then you can still get treated, but if you enter into the public system, it will just take you longer. The waiting list is a longer um, process. Uh, and the tax isn't really that high. I mean, you guys over in the States pay profoundly more for healthcare than we ever do. So we can max out all our private healthcare options, and that will maybe cost you maybe two fifty per person per month, and that's with everything. Uh, I pay perhaps I pay about sixty dollars a month um, for the two of us, and that it doesn't give you like private benefits really per se but it does give you a little bit more of a um, progress along the line and you get dental benefits, physiotherapy benefits, things like that, um, free eyeglasses, stuff like that, up to a certain limit. So in terms of cost to benefit ratio, we do very well here in Australia for that. On the downside, if you compare in countries, you know, we miss out on a lot of things like well-priced um, consumer goods. Uh, I mean, this country only has something like 26, 27 million people. So the state of New York has pretty much the same amount of people, and yet we're almost the size of the United States. So you do have a lot of costs being consumed simply because of the very dispersed nature of the country. Uh, Spencer, yeah, I pay. There's, there's a mandatory amount you have to pay if you over, if your income is over a certain portion. But, I mean, if you earn more than fifty, sixty thousand, then I think it should pay maybe six, seven hundred dollars in tax, extra for the healthcare. So really, I mean, that's pretty small. Alright, uh, and it looks like the healthcare talk killed the whole channel. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, Alright, this machine looks like it's all good to go, other than from that god awful screen. And I will simply present to them an option of replacing it. I might say, I might say, look, you know, for another 20 bucks on top of the cost of what already this is, I can swap it out for you. So, and it'll take me 10 minutes to do that. 
shut down. Okay. Transportation population density. Ah, okay. If Australia was simply contained within the states of Victoria and New South Wales, then we would definitely be better off with something like a um, private enterprise type system. But with everything being so dispersed, we have to resort to government uh, socialist type policies. Otherwise, there'd simply be no way you would get people out into the um, sparse areas. And we depend a lot on the people out in the sparse areas. Like we've got all the mining, all the agriculture, things like that out here. So it's a necessity. So consider it as you will uh, um, I don't know, a bit of a sweetener, I guess. And obviously both sides of the population complain about the other side. So the country folk complain about the city folk and the city folk complain about the country folk, all saying that they earn the greater amount of money and the other half is consuming it all. So, yeah. As far as I can tell from the statistics and the write-ups, uh, and this will not go well with the people in this town, even though we do produce a lot of the export uh, income, with our raw resources, it is still the city folk that tend to actually really bring in the bulk of the money for the country. So, it is one thing I wish Australia would grow up and stop doing, and that is selling themselves out like some sort of desperate date. Uh, we used to have a good enterprise, a good industry for converting raw materials into you know, additional products, like, you know, take iron ore. Uh, we've got so much iron ore in this country and we used to produce the steel and we do st still produce steel to a degree but not a lot uh, we sold most of that off and we decided now oh, let's just sell all our ore off to china or wherever and now we've got a problem where we effectively are becoming a stupid country that doesn't know how to reproduce this sort of stuff or can't produce this sort of stuff on demand anymore and as such, we're at the mercy of those who do. Um, so yeah, we've sold out our refinement capacity in pursuit of the dollar. And while it makes sense uh, on a business, yeah, it makes business sense on the short term, but in terms of uh, stability of the country, it was sort of a cost that perhaps we should have taken Especially given that we we are very much an island, a western type island amongst a very different culture around us. So, 16 months for healthcare would be a dream here. Yep. Uh, Australia is huge and most things want to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really that bad. It really isn't. I know. It is fun to... I know you know that. It is fun to um, go on about it. And for sure, yeah, you go hugging a snake, you're going to end up in a bad way, and if you try to roll with the crocodile, you're definitely not going to come out best. You'll just simply be some digested food at the end of the day. Uh, and besides, most of the folk in the city, they never get to see you or deal with any of this, really. I mean, once in a blue moon, you'll get someone who's unlucky enough that a brown snake ended up in their yard or something like that. Uh, and usually it's the people on the fringes, you know, as the cities expand and they push into the bushland. Uh, hey, Pianoff. The Australian education level is very high, a large number of inventors, limited access to angel funding. Agreed. Yes, it's always been a problem. Uh, it became particularly acute back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, uh, where we had a considerable number of very good inventions and they all ended up going overseas where the funding was. On the other hand, if you can play football or cricket, now when I say football I'm talking about rugby, uh, you can get all the funding you want. 
but dear God, if you happen to be a scientist or an inventor or something, well, that's just that's just not Australian, mate. Blokes don't do that sort of stuff. As for them stupid scientists, so yeah, Australia does have a bad uh, culture uh, perception issue, whereby if you do any of these sort of things, if you're an inventor or a bit of an academic or something, you are generally uh, frowned upon in somewhat by uh, by the other population, mostly because Australia was established on the grounds of you know we had a convict population, so it was pretty rough going. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a case of rebel against the establishment. It's sort of still stuck with us a little bit too strong. Uh, let's see. Universal public health care here in France. You can resort to private insurance company for the costs not covered by the government. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to attack with the spiders too much. Cry J2000. Certain things you really need to play the long game instead of banking on the short term games. Uh, exactly, Cry J. I mean, and that's where it's been a bit disappointing that we sold out our. Um, skills base. Uh, we don't really know how to do a lot of things anymore that we used to be able to do. And so if push come to shove and we get a bit isolated, then we've got ourselves a very rough five to ten years to ramp up again. Uh, and we're closing down still more things. So, and there's a great deal of um, resistance against any of these sort of uh, progressive ideas such as renewable energies and whatnot. So, but yeah, it's kind of like if you're playing a game of civilization or something like that. You know, you do still at least try to keep your core skills somewhere. Stray saying, may I find my problem? I bridged a resistor on the right, nobody saw it, so I'll post it again. I did not see that. Now I'm going to have to have a look. You need to watch comedian Steve Hughes on the Australian Manly thing. Oh, man. Is that guy related to Merv Hughes by any chance? Merv Hughes was a big cricketer with a whopping great big moustache that almost equaled the brilliance of... Um, I keep wanting to say Kurt Russell, but it's not. <laughs> Who's your big moustache guy over there? Smokey and the Bandit. What's his name? God damn, I can't believe. I've got Now I've got Magnum P.I. Uh, who's Magnum P.I.? What is his name? As soon as someone says it, I'll go, Oh, yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah, let's have a look. Oh yeah, I see that short. Yep. Whoops. Bit of a bridge there. Uh, inventors are not manly enough, and you can mostly blame that on the stupid Einstein tongue image. I had to, I had to translate that from tongue to tongue. Sort your typing out, Spencer. You're a disgrace to the community. Tom Selleck, thank you, thank you so much. Yes, Tom Selleck. Yeah. Yeah, big Merv Hughes, big cricketer, he's, he's got the big moustache, but it's sort of turned more into a uh, uh, Chopper Reed type moustache sometimes, if you're not careful. But yeah, there was also Burt Reynolds, so yeah, Burt Reynolds and Tom Selleck, either way, but yeah, two blokes that really went wild with their moustaches and did a good job of them. Uh, okay, well this is, uh, oh, that's not completely done, gotta put that screw in. But yeah, I'll write this up, give the customer a quote, um, see how they go. Primarily it came in mostly for the hinges and the lack of charging, so they didn't make any mention of the screen being an issue, so I'll assume that it wasn't a priority for them. Uh, 
50 science was cool now it's media studies spacex i'm really happy to see what they're doing i'm glad they had the tenacity to keep with their um, reusable first stage and it is now getting to the point where it's almost routine we're sort of like yeah you know it, it landed whoop de doo so he is achieving the dream uh really like that the guy has put his money where his dreams are I mean, and with the Tesla stuff too. So, I don't know how the Hyperloop's going to go, but, yeah, why not? Give it a shot. And if it fails miserably, so what? You know, he's done the cars, he's done the rockets. Uh, and I see, though, that uh, the new Bert Rutan um, Strato lifter or something like that came out of the hangar last week I must admit from an engineering perspective I have my reservations about how successful that project's going to be it may be a case of a little bit too late uh, and the market's changed too much they always landed but now fewer pieces <laughs> yeah that's true mind you if they burn up on re-entry do they ever land yeah, I mean, some of it does, but some of it remains as a gas. One thing that drove me insane today in the local paper, I saw uh, someone said there's, uh, there's about water and contamination of water because we've got a massive coal project, coal mine that wants to open up nearby and they want to use the water out of our underground basin and it will in invariably get contaminated in spite of all of their promises because historically I don't think there's been a project that hasn't contaminated the water supply and someone wrote in they said what's the big worry you know so if the water gets um, contaminated it'll just pump back into the land and it'll get filtered through the uh, uh, the various strata of rock and whatnot and they said it's not like we can destroy water it's like we've always had the same amount of water since the world started to what we have now and I thought oh no I said no don't be one of those people who misconstrue the concept of um, elements and even that's not really strictly correct anyway versus compounds I felt like replying back that you know it's like every time someone burns something your little statement is a little bit wronger wronger oh my god i just that's bad um yeah that's what that's the sort of people i'm dealing with a lot of here but then i suppose everybody in the world is so nothing unique but uh yeah things like that just drive me out the wall but I have to bite my tongue because it doesn't really achieve anything if I try and correct them because they generally don't want to be corrected even if you try to do it a nice way it's not what they're actually after they just want their little stake in the ground their flag of whatever stance they have and they're not actually interested in understanding anything three hours oh good god really it is, and I haven't even had food. I do need coffee. Hello, TCRS. Oh, my. All right, Mike. Well, good luck with the docs. I'm not really keen on doctors, but good luck with it. Australia 77. We're supposed to get a $40 million bullet train from Toronto to Windsor, Ontario to Canada. Oh, in Ontario, okay. Do 240 kilometers an hour. That'd be nice if they did that. Thunderfoot did a video debunking Hyperloop. Summary, the pressure makes it ineffective. Yeah, that's going to be the hard thing, like, to pull that sort of uh, vacuum. I think maybe if they went for a, more of a partial vacuum and reduced the anticipated performance, it may be more effective. Uh, yeah. So if you put contaminated supply of anything, give it to the drug dealer and turn it into a pure product. <laughs> Someone's been watching... Um, Breaking Bad, yeah, yeah, and the project beyond time and budget, right? Yeah, family. Yeah. Landing on Mars is not such a big thing. Mm. Uh, all right, I think it's time to wrap up. Um, the numbers are dropping off, and I don't blame. It's getting late. It's getting long. 
and I'm not doing anything interesting. So thank you very much for everyone sticking around, and uh, probably a month or so before I get that microscope. Actually, more like two months because I've got to get it shipped, and that's going to be a long, painful wait. Uh, it's going to be through probably UPS, or if I can, I'll try to get it done by something more reputable. But see, yeah, maybe DHL. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'll be doing next, but I guess we'll wait and see, and you'll get a notification if I'm back on. So until then, take care, and I'll see you next time.